Hey, what's up, guys? Kyle from Hospitality MD here, coming back at you with another episode of our podcast interview series presented right here on YouTube. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to this channel, be sure to like this video, be sure to turn on bell notifications, comment on this video, and share this video. Now, today's interview is with Jeff Kulik. He is the Area Vice President at Northwood Hospitality and the General Manager of the London West Hollywood. And today we are talking to him about his unique flavor of hospitality that has kept him not only surviving but thriving during the pandemic, and also about why the area vice president of the company moved his desk into the lobby. Stay tuned for a very heartwarming interview. If you love hospitality, this is for you. I'll see you at the end of the video. Jeff, thank you for being on the show with us. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me. Well, thank you for asking me. I'm flattered. Absolutely. Um, so you're currently the area vice president and GM at the London in West Hollywood. We actually, uh, just a few months ago, interviewed Sarah Dandeshi. I'm sure you you know her by now, and you're maybe very proud of what she's been doing recently. Um, and I didn't connect very the dots proud. until recently that... Uh, that you guys were kind of uh, connected with one another. One of the things that stood out to me about when I interviewed her was she said, yeah, we were allowed to film and do stuff at the hotel to help build, you know, her brand up. And the first thing I thought of was, wow, that's so atypical. Uh, most places would have been frowning upon, upon that. And, oh, you got to talk to the director of communications and you got to go through all this red tape. Um, but now knowing that it was you, it makes it makes a lot of sense to me why why that happened. So, <laughs> you know what? I'm all about I'm all about people's personal growth and advancement, and I think that it takes a pretty foolish leader to think that their team isn't going to grow or advance beyond the current role that they're in. So why not support that? And when you do, you get so much better results from them in their current role. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, let me let me start with this. I usually ask all of our guests this question. I'm interested to know from you. Um, do you remember the first time that you felt hospitality? Thinking way back, go dig deep as far back as you can go. Yeah, um, we were moving. My family was moving when I was a kid from Maryland to Hawaii. And my dad was taking over as a uh, director of this oceanography company and part of Sea Life Park. And when we first moved there, we didn't have a home. So we lived at the Kahala Hilton, um, which was a beautiful hotel at that time. I haven't been there ever since I was a kid, but I remember that they had dolphins that were um, swimming around in their own outdoor pool areas. And there was a time where you go outside and pet the dolphins, but I do remember just everyone being so friendly and welcoming and there were fresh flowers and fruit everywhere and um, it was just such a nice experience. I remember thinking that it was a magical place as a kid and, um, you know, it was special. It was a very, very special time for us and the staff really went out of their way to make it special. Yeah. How old were you, Jeff, at the time? I was uh, 12, <laughs> 12 years old. So, um, and you can only imagine what it's like to move away from all of your friends and your family, really, and move to an island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I didn't know what to expect and just the welcoming of going there, even at the airport, being greeted with these hula girls that put lays around your neck at the airport. And um, it was just such an amazing journey. And Looking back at that time, I feel very blessed because all the traveling we did as a child made me a little bit more worldly and I'm more appreciative of, of hospitality in general. 
Yeah, I can I can only imagine. I mean, um, my mom is a flight attendant with United Airlines, actually. So uh, her main trip that she would do is fly from Chicago O'Hare to uh, Honolulu, and uh, sometimes and she would lay over for maybe thirty hours or so, and so it was like a mini Hawaii vacation every weekend for her. And sometimes I would go along with her. Um, and yeah, there really is a that aloha spirit can really be contagious. That's for sure. So then you add in the the resort and hotel kind of experience that you had, and mm -hmm. it sounds like you really got bit by the hospitality bug at that point. I really did. I felt I felt how what a wonderful and creative life that would be, you know, to live in Hawaii and the hotel was surrounded by the ocean and we were right at a beach and. Um, it was just very magical. It really was a very magical time for us. Yeah. But you didn't realize at that time that you were going to go into hotels. You didn't know that you'd be, um, you know, a vice president, you know, just, you know, a few years later, like this was just kind of subconscious, right? So when, when did you get your start in, in hotels and in hospitality more officially, if you will? Well, I was, I was an actor first and a dancer. I was a great tap dancer back in the day. And I was performing in shows in West Hollywood at professional theaters. And a lot of my friends were getting agents and making movies or being called to Broadway. And I gave myself to a certain age to have an agent and have a gig booked and, and um, a plan for what would happen if that didn't happen. So um, when it didn't happen, my sister was already in hotel school and she graduated from Stout University in Wisconsin. And I just decided that um, I was going to go home and I was going to um, work and put myself through school. Um, I thought that was important because I wanted to pay it, I wanted to pay for it on my myself because I wanted it to be without pressure from my father and um, I, and I appreciated it more because it was my money. <laughs> so. Um, I made the dean's list, I, and I and I had a great professor of hospitality and um, his his assistant professor and the many classes that I took. I, I really think that hotel school back in that time was really more about discipline and learning the different functions of hotel. You ha you had to be a very disciplined student to do well. You know there was a lot of studying going on, and there was also something called practicum, which you put on an event for the college and for your family and friends and like hosting an event. Um, but you had to create it all from the ground up. So um, it was probably, uh, I graduated, I started a little later because I gave myself till I was 21 to be an actor. So um, I, I was a restaurant manager and I put myself through hotel school and by the time I was 27, I had a choice to join the Hyatt Regency in Chicago or to start my career at the Disneyland Hotel in California. So, California. <laughs> no snow. <laughs> I've seen your dancing in the lobby on LinkedIn. Still oh, pretty yeah. good. You still got it. I think you still got it. Um, you know, even yeah. after all these years. <laughs> Don't forget, it's like falling off a horse, you just get right back on it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, Hyatt Regency Chicago like 2019 rooms or something like that would have been a would have been a beast to deal with but the the hotel in disneyland as well i mean i'm sure just just the same there you go um so you what did you do when you first started there your first job at a real hotel you you did your restaurant stuff you got your degree yeah. boom you're at a hotel what are you doing they wanted me to open a um ice cream and casual food restaurant underneath the executive offices um, in the center of the hotel resort. At that time, it was owned by the Rather Corporation. It was not a part of the Disney Corporation, but there was the monorail that connected the hotel to the park. So it was the exclusive hotel. And actually, Mr. Rather loaned Walt Disney money to help him build Disneyland. So there was a tight relationship there. And then two years into my being there, Disney bought out Mr. Rather. But um, yeah, I started in food and beverage and I, I was quickly promoted. I, you know, when I started my career, I decided that 
um, I was going to be on stage just like I was when I was an actor and that the guests were my audience and that I needed to put on a show every day. I was very dedicated. I really wanted to be successful. So if my schedule was to get there at 6 in the morning to open the restaurant, I would get there at 3 in the morning. And I would make sure all the sugar, salts, and peppers were filled. I, I just straightened out the tables and straightened out the chairs. And almost every morning, the executive team would look down and see this kid setting up a restaurant that wasn't opening for two or so many hours. And they were like, who is this person? What is he doing? And then they would come to the restaurant and I would greet them and I would, how was your stay? How was your, how was your, not your stay, but how was your meal? And are you enjoying it? And don't forget we have Rocky Road as a special ice cream today. And I was just so personable that they all started going to the food and beverage director to say, listen, if you don't want this kid in your department, we'll take him. I want him to be a guest services manager. I want him to be a housekeeping manager. I wanted him to come and work in engineering. So I had so many fans right off the bat just because of my work ethic at the time. So I, I moved up. I managed their largest restaurant. It was called a Monorail Cafe. It was made $5 million a year. It was um, a very busy restaurant right outside the Monorail. And then I was at the Shipyard Inn in California Wine Cellar uh, managing that as my last stint. So um, that was my first two years of hotel management. Wow. Yeah. I mean, so talk about work ethic, number one, and kind of the attention to de detail and the discipline that you, you had described that goes into doing well in hotel school. Um, you know, at, at least at the time, I don't know if you have any thoughts about it has hotel school changed in your opinion since then, but um, at least back then, you know, you, you mentioned there's a certain discipline that's involved to get there at three in the morning. That's just, crazy. At least a lot of people would probably tell you, you heard that before, I'm sure, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll never forget one day I actually wore two different shoes, a black shoe and a brown shoe, because it was so early to get up. I just stick my feet in the closet and I went. But, um, you know, I just believe if you want to, I, I believe that everybody can shine and you can shine as brightly as you let yourself shine. And so, I didn't just want to be average. I didn't want to go through my life as just one of many hotel people. I wanted, I wanted to win my Oscar. I wanted to win my Golden Globe. And the only way I was going to do that was by achievement in my profession. And so when I meant hard work and dedication at school, I was on the dean's list. I, I just didn't take, I took it so seriously because I gave up something I was passionate about and I had to find the passion in my future career to live a life that I would be proud of living. And so that's how I've approached all of my jobs. I've always wanted to be the best. And it doesn't mean that I wanted to run over anybody. And I loved meeting all the different people along, the, along my course. And I've had amazing mentors that have taken me under their wing and developed me, which is an important part of a senior leader. Um, but what I put out there is what I got in return. So um, I don't take things for granted and I appreciate what I'm involved with. And, you know, if I can't find passion in where I'm working, then I have to change the job because if I'm not feeling excitement and passion about it, then I'm not going to be successful. So I, I, I think it's great to note that, you know, your hotel career wasn't plan a for you right it was kind of you you said you gave up something I mean, in exchange for hotels um so either you you really do love hotels and you've kind of you've you've learned to love it or you're just a really great actor and maybe you just missed your chance because <laughs> you know what i mean which one is well, it it's been a 30 it's been a 30 year plus career and I can't fake it that long. <laughs> so um, I learned to love it. And look, I've met people from around the world. I've, I've had more exposure to the, to the um, human condition, <laughs> so to speak, just from people traveling to the various hotels that I work in and from all different walks of life to um, meeting celebrities. And, and um, it's been a fascinating career. I met a I met George Bush Sr. and his wife, Barbara, and they stayed in one of my hotels, and that was very exciting. And it's just, it's just been interesting. And every 
every moment provides an opportunity to learn something new, to gain new knowledge and, and to um, continue to grow because that's the other trick. If you're not continuing to grow, you're going to become stagnant and, and I can't have that. I have, to, I have to always observe and learn and listen so that I can, um, I can develop myself even after 30 years of being in hotels. I don't know it all. And sometimes there's a bright light shining that's working for me. And I have something to learn from that person about work and about tenacity and about attitude and about client connection that I didn't know. So your approach to managing hotels from what I've seen uh, and what you've shared just doesn't seem industry standard. It doesn't seem normal necessarily. It seems very unique. And that's why I reached out to you because uh, it seems that you prioritize has hospitality in what could maybe even be seen as almost a radical fashion because in a world where hotels are typically run by asset managers and real estate investors, you are coming at it from a hospitality first approach. At least that's what it looks like. So in your opinion, do you think that you run your hotel differently than a lot of people do and why, or why not? Well, this is, this hotel is unique out of all the hotels I've ever worked at and it has just a lot of unique qualities and it has a unique audience and it has a unique uh, team member base. And the leaders that I work with are unique. It's just a special place. It's, it, it's a, an all sweet product and it's a glamorous product. Um, when, I, when I was hired here, I, I was asked, um, being that this was the top performing hotel in West Hollywood and it had over 50,000 square feet of empty space throughout the hotel, what would you do with this space to take the hotel to the next level? And I've never had that opportunity before. And so when something scares me, I know it's the right move to step into that role. And I was able to develop a screening room that seats 110 people that caters to the entertainment industry. I had the hotel wired for junketing, which is um, a big part of our success. Um, I built a lobby bar where there was just a hallway before because the hotel did not have a very good bar. It was tucked away in the back of a dark restaurant. Um, we built suite products that compete with Beverly Hills, and I have the largest suite in uh, the, from the Midwest to the West Coast. It's 15,000 square feet. It's on the roof of the hotel. It's two stories, and it was designed by Vivian Westwood, who's a famous fashion uh, designer out of London. So I've been able to put my fingerprint all over this hotel, so to speak, and um, certainly my passion, my drive, my determination, my energy, my creativity has lent itself to support the hotel success, coupling with the leadership team, the home office team, the designers, the creative people I've met in the entertainment industry that helped me build the theater with ideas and suggestions of how to build a world-class theater. But my, it, that's why I'm particularly crazy and passionate about this place, because I've taken it from one level to the next. and. It has a definite footprint in Hollywood right now and in the fashion industry. Um, but also, part of, part of my approach this year has had to do with COVID and the downturn and how it's affected business. And it's been very, very challenging. And hotels are not supposed to be sad places. They're supposed to be welcoming and friendly and service oriented. And I felt very, very sad for a while because of the situation. And um, I just woke up one day when I was looking at, the, um, looking at the hotel and seeing that, well, all the event space had to be closed because of the health department. I couldn't have any events here. There's no indoor dining right now, so I'm serving food outside on our marble terrace. So the restaurant's completely empty. And um, there's a lot of restrictions in place that keep us from operating like we used to. And I thought, I have to do something that is like an injection into the atmosphere to bring up the spirit of the team, to bring up the spirit of the guest, who first were only allowed to be essential travelers. Um, and I just decided that I was going to put myself front and center again. You know, as the higher up you go, the more responsibility you have. And being a regional, I have two hotels at the moment, but it requires a lot of focus because you're, you have global responsibility to the investors, to the home office team, 
to your team, to the guests that stay in your hotels, and it's, it's about service, it's about quality, it's about food presentation, it's about creative cocktails, it's about the feeling that someone gets to walk into the space, it's about the interactions that our team members have the opportunity to make a wow experience at any given moment. And um, I, I just stepped out front out of my office um, because there wasn't a need for me to be focused on forecasts and um, create, you know, creative sales opportunities. And, you know, this was just operating in a different environment completely. So a lot of what I've been doing is taking me back to my original hotel days and I'm just out in front and I'm there to serve and what can I do to make your stay more special? And, you know, um, the restaurant isn't open. That's no problem. What would you like? You know, we'll have to put it in a go box, but I'm happy to do that for you. And let me go get that for you. And then they find out I'm the general manager and it's like, oh my God, you're the general manager and you just served me coffee and a croissant and fruit. I can't believe it. And I was like, well, why not? You're my guest. And isn't that what hospitality is? So it's been about, it's been a few months that I've been, I've been out up front and center and I'm learning a lot about my guests and I'm learning a lot about my team and I'm just putting the puzzle pieces back together as we're trying to grow out of this serious time frame, but with a better attitude and with, with some fun injected because the human spirit, there's something inside all of us that want to have fun and want to have an amazing experience whether you're working or whether you're traveling. So this was almost maybe even an experiment to you. You said we need to do something. So I think what we're going to do is like, cause you, my understanding is you moved your, your desk into the lobby. Like you are basically from 6 AM to, well, let us know how long are you usually there? It depends. It just depends on the occupancy and the demand and the need. One day I was walking out the door at six o'clock and a couple showed up and said, we're thinking of getting married. Do you happen to have a catering manager here at the moment? And I was like, you know, I'm going to show you around. I'm going to do the tour. I'm going to show you where I think you should get married. And so I didn't have a catering manager there at the time, you know, but was I going to say no? No, right. I can do that. I put all my stuff down and I wound up leaving at eight o'clock instead of six o'clock. So it just depends on what the day has in store. But I do make it my business to be here at 6 in the morning because I want to talk to my night crew. I want to see how their night was, what happened, did we have walk-ins, was everything okay, is there anything I need to be aware of? And I want to say, how is your family and how are your kids doing and how's the homeschooling going and, you know, how's it going with your nursing career and are you, are you almost there? Or what? It's about being human. You know, it's just because we have these titles doesn't mean anything. My goal has always been to shake the title and break it and make people feel like they can just call me Jeff and talk to me. So um, I have a, I think I have a unique relationship with my team. And so I want to be there when the night crew leaves and I want to be there when the evening crew comes in. So I have a chance to see everyone during my work day and make sure I, I can look someone in the eye and I can know what they're thinking. I can feel their heartbeat and I can see if something's wrong and something's right and I can fix things. So, and, and so prior to COVID, right. Um, this was not something that you typically did. Is that right? This is something that I did not sit in the lobby. We, we ran 87% annual occupancy. My screening room, there was people in the lobby. I, you did not need to add one other person into the lobby, but you know, I was meeting clients through the sales team. I was greeting them for their sites. I would, you know, thank the studio executives who showed up to check on a junket or so I was meeting people at, and you know, I'm a firm believer in that you don't pass anyone without saying hello. So whether it's a team member that I've seen 10 times that morning, I say hello to them 10 times. Hi, how are you doing? How's it going? <laughs> you know, you're still doing okay. Need a break. Did you get your break yet? Everything all right? You know, or the guests. So it's more, it was much more casual. Now it's much more intentional. So when I see two guests walk in the door, after they finish checking in, I'll be like, hello, I'm sitting over here and I have freshly baked cookies from our bakery. Um, would you like a bottle of water or would you like a squeezable bulldog? I have those too. And they'll come over like, what are you, who are you? <laughs> I'm the hotel general manager. And I just want to make sure that I meet everyone that's checking in and say hello to everyone that's checking out and 
thank them for staying with us. So what brings you here and where are you from? And I get engaged with them and then I learn things about their trip and um, it becomes a creative adventure for me. Um, there's a couple that comes here from Fresno who I had never met and they've been coming here for seven years and that's a shame that I never had the chance to meet them. But I met them when I moved into the lobby and um, he has a pacemaker and it's a serious situation and he has to go to Cedars, Sinai to have it checked regularly. He was, he was here because he was, they were thinking about, we need to change your pacemaker because the technology changed. So it was very serious. But, you know, I wound up buying them a club sandwich. I'm like, this is the best sandwich on our menu. And the chef uses this kind of rye. I, I love it on rye bread. And this is how, how I would eat it. And, you know, what are you drinking today? Oh, you like Chardonnay with a glass of ice? No problem. I can do that. And let me take you to the Marble Terrace where you can eat and have a view. And then I found out that they were huge fans of the Wizard of Oz. So um, on the day that they went to Cedars for the procedure, we had pop-up books in our gift store, like beautiful children's pop-up books where you open a page and it's like the whole world of the Wizard of Oz um, was on that page. It was a yellow brick road and the rainbow and all this other stuff. And I put it in their room that night with uh, chocolate cake and two glasses of Chardonnay um, because I thought they could use it after a day of that. And they came back and I saw them, they were a bit bedraggled, and the next moment they were running back into the lobby. Oh my, where'd you find this book? We can't believe it. It's the Wizard of Oz, our favorite. Our grandkids are not touching this book. They were so animated and excited. You know, for me, it's like the injection that I need to know that I've done a good thing. I've made someone's day, and I can put my head on my pillow at night and say that I've earned my paycheck today. You know, or it's um, hearing the phone ring one too many times at the front desk, and I'm going up to the front desk. Hello, this is Jeff. How can I help you? You know, thank you for calling the London West Hollywood. This is Jeff. How may I help you? You know, um, whatever I can do, whatever I need to do, I'm going to do it. And, um, and I'm having fun at a very sad time, <laughs> taking care of my guests and taking care of my team. So I just turned... I turned my focus away from what it used to be, mentoring my team, having one-on-one -on -one meetings, doing roundtable meetings with a variety of team members from different departments, um, you know, have going to the revenue meeting, going to the sales meeting, going to the leadership meeting, going to the executive meeting. All of that's now either come and gone or it's on Zoom. So let me, let me fill my day with my guests. Let me win some fans. Let me, you know, I, I discovered a lot of people were actually here just to um, have a night of sleep and then check into an Airbnb. And I was like, wait, don't do that. Let me match your Airbnb rate. Why would you want to leave our hotel? Do you really want to clean a house? Do you really want to cook for yourself? But, so, you know, I've also been booking business in, um, from the guests that are already here. I've been rebooking business in, a, in very unique and original ways. So um, this time frame has been interesting, but I, I'm, I'm happy that I found a solution to what was ailing me and what was ailing the hotel. You, yeah, because I mean, you've always been meeting people. You've, you've always been active. You have always been saying hello. You've always been doing that. Um, but now there, that, the, that higher level stuff, right? Where the fashion people are coming in, like that, that's not happening right now, right? So it's, it, I, I love how you shifted it to why shouldn't I just meet every single guest and just talk to everybody and be there for my team and see all three shifts every single day and make, figure out a way to make it work. Um, I know that a lot of people in our audience who are listening to this right now are saying, wow, I wish my VP, my regional, my GM was, was anything like you because right now during this crisis, we've been abandoned, forgotten about, we're left alone at the hotel. We are, um, you know, uh, they're just, they just feel like they've been left behind essentially, uh, at the hands of ownership and management. Um, so my question to you would be number one, what would you say to that, that, you know, hotelier who you don't know at that hotel in the middle of Oklahoma, who's at that Spring Hill Suites who feels yeah. forgotten about. And then what would you say to their ownership and their management group? Well, first I would say to that individual that was having those feelings and emotions, let your light shine. Be the superstar you can be. Create a path for others to follow you. Make it the, the norm to go out of your way and to be friendly and, and, and um, 
make your own name. Don't rely on other people to to path to create the path that you're going to walk on. Make the path happen for you, and then see what happens as a result of your efforts and your dedication and your passion, your drive, your determination. Don't let anyone take away your drive and enthusiasm. Put it out for everyone to see. But the reason that I started to be more vocal on LinkedIn recently was because I thought, you know, I'm one person. And you hear those stories about the man throwing the pebble in the water and the ripple going outward and you know, or all these, all these fish were washed up on the shore and there's one man out there throwing them back in one at a time, you know, and, the, and someone says, hey, why don't you call for help? You know, well, then this fish would have died. Well, what does it matter? Well, it matters to that fish. So one at a time, I'm throwing them back into. So I decided to put a ripple out there. And um, I listen, I'm a passionate person. I'm outward. I'm outgoing. I was an actor. <laughs> you know, I know how to put on the show. And um, I have been fortunate to be allowed to be myself and to be successful. And um, sure, I've had failures, but you learn from that too. And, you know, we all recover from making mistakes. It's the only way that you learn. But by and large, I would say that I've been successful because I'm determined to be successful. I will not be stopped to be successful. I will, I will challenge the CEO and the president to let me be successful because I know what I need to do to bring success to where I'm working. And, um, you know, um, I'm just passionate and I'm a, I believe in myself and I, and I have a proven track record after all these years. So I would, I would say, guys, you know, depending on who you work for, help them see the light, help them get the spirit, help them to know that when you make your team and your guests happy, the rewards at the bottom line double, triple, they grow. It's called transfer treatment. I learned that a long time ago in my career. The way you treat someone, well, then they're going to go and treat the next person just like that. So I learned that about leadership and how you tell someone how they're not doing a good job and how to improve. Or you say, great job. Let's see you take it to here. You know, um, the way that you treat someone is the way they're going to treat the next person. So um, I, I, just, I just say to all the managers, you be the example. You show them how. Soon you'll be the senior vice president or you'll be the president of the company or, or you'll be recruited by someone that does care, that sees your light shining and like, I need that in my hotel. Let's get this person on board. You know, I've been recruited that way before. So um, don't let anyone extinguish your light. Yeah, definitely. Um it's and making your own path too as well you know there's a lot of people who are waiting for the gatekeeper who's the vp or the the president or the ceo to open the gate for them to move forward but no you can you can definitely make your own path yourself now uh it it seems like your hotel right now in where everyone around you essentially or around just in the industry seems to be collapsing at the moment. It seems like your hotel is still a beacon of hope and hospitality for the entire industry. Um, it really does. Do you feel that way? Oh, really? wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that would be a wonderful thing, you know, to be a beacon of hope. Yes. Um, I don't know that I'm setting an example for the industry. That would be a beautiful thing. And I would be very proud. You know, it's really, it's not about ego and it's not about awards and it's not about, you know, having your name in print. It's more about helping the hospitality community grow out of this and be more hospitable and to know you can still do it right now. There's, you know, when I just had nurses here and I had doctors here and I had healthcare people that were coming to check people's temperatures or do the COVID test, I treated them just the same as I treated those guests with a pacemaker. You know, how are you doing today? Would you like a cookie before you leave? They're the best chocolate chip cookies you've ever had. You know, well, I'm not a guest here, so you are right now to me. Take a <laughs> cookie. You know, you might become a guest in the future. Or here's my business card. The next time that you're not here coming here on business, call me. I'll give you a great rate, you know, or the next time you want to be a guest. So it doesn't matter who it was. Sometimes it's the postman that comes in to deliver the mail. And I'll say, 
thank you for delivering the mail. I mean, you're out there, you're putting yourself out there, you're walking around to all these businesses, but you're still making that happen. And I appreciate you. You know, he looked at me like I was, <laughs> I had three eyes, like, really, you're thanking me, the postman, you know? Um, and I said, you know, um, I appreciate what you're doing, what you're bringing to the table. You know, the reason that I uh, tap dance in the lobby, well, there was a several different reasons, but there was a girl that came into my hotel to deliver amenities for um, celebrity VIPs that were staying here during COVID. They were doing their, they, they were going to film a TV show, but they had to be in isolation for 14 days. And so she was there to deliver their amenities. And I was out on the valet area walking around and I saw her and she looked bedraggled, stressed overwhelmed. She had a lot of amenities to take out of her car. And I just walked over to her. I'm like, how are you? I'm like, welcome to the London. Thank you for staying with us. She's like, I'm not staying with you. I'm delivering. I'm just a, I'm just a goat for, I'm just delivering amenities. I'm like, well, that's a very special job. I'm like, let me help you. We'll get a bellman here. So he came over there and I was like, what's your name? And uh, her name was um, Ebony and a very, very pretty um, black girl. And I said, Ebony, I'm like, that's like the Paul McCartney song. You're Ebony and I'm Ivory. I'm like, do you, you know, I'm like, do you like to dance? And I started, Ebony, Ivory, living in perfect. You know, I started doing that whole thing. And she's like, yeah. And she smiled and she started dancing with me. And, you know, I said, you know, Ebony, I said, I'm going to make this week as Ebony week. And she told me what studio she was working for. And I said, any one of your friends that come to my hotel, I also talked about the club sandwich with her. I said, I'm buying you lunch today. It's going to be a club sandwich. It's the best club sandwich. I said, if anyone that comes from your workplace and says, Ebony sent me here, they're getting a free club sandwich. I said, that's how important Ebony is to me. And she, I mean, she went from being hassled, bedraggled, looking down at the ground, like, how am I going to get this all done by myself? She was gleaming and smiling. She, I mean, she called me a nut. You're crazy. You're a nut. You know, <laughs> I'm nobody. I'm not your guest. You know, I'm not your guest. I said, you're here, aren't you? You are my guest. And this is Ebony Week at the London West Hollywood. You know, so it's just, I wanted to make her feel good. I saw the pain in her eyes. I, you know, that's hospitality. How do I, turn, how do I take this situation and turn it around to make it happy? How do I um, take a, a challenging situation of someone's health and turn it into a joyous moment, you know, or how do I even take a couple that are, they came out from San Francisco to pick up a dog that they are, you know, that they're just recently purchased as their child since they don't have kids, you know, it's just any, you know, okay, great. I'm going to give you a bottle of champagne and we're going to celebrate on the rooftop and, you know, you're we're going to toast to the new family member. I don't care what it was, you know, it doesn't matter to me why they're here, but they're here and they should be made, to feel special. That's a thank you for sharing that story. That made me feel really good. Um, it's Ebony <laughs> Week at the London West Hollywood. I love that. Uh, it just seems like I'm a little is, crazy, but but it's it's great. You remind me of of Willy Wonka a little bit. Just whatever is <laughs> you know, it just you're gonna make the experience happen. Doesn't matter who it is. Doesn't matter what it was. And even the postman, somebody who's just used to being just straight up ignored and just not addressed or acknowledged whatsoever. And he probably was like, wait, you're talking to me? Like normally I kind of just shuffle in and everybody ignores me or they hand me the mail and they just forget about me. Like, no, nobody can come existence, within my you know? eyesight. Yeah. No one's coming within my eyesight and getting ignored. They're going to get, they're going to get my attention. And you have a knack for making people feel special, valued, important, um, building their self-esteem. Like, I just, again, the, like this Ebony story, right? She was like, I'm not a guest. I'm just the amenity delivery person. I'm just here to do this. Is just this. I'm not who you think I am. But you told her, no, you, <laughs> number one, you are who, who I think you are. And you're more than that. You're, we're honoring you. You know, it, it's just her self-esteem must have been through the roof. And I'm sure this is just one of many countless interactions that you've had. And, you know, you, it, you wouldn't do it for the awards. You wouldn't do it for the recognition. You wouldn't do it for any of that. But the, my, my whole point, right, is that there's a lot of 
ownership and management of hotels that think that this level of hospitality is just not practical. They think we have to just cut, 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 take, 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 and, uh, and, and just survive and just hang on and just, you know, kind of retreat. Right. But you are proving here that this kind of hospitality is a practical business tool for anybody mm-hmm. who's running a hotel. You've won numerous well, awards what I from travel and leisure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. What I would say to those person that doubted, look at my star report. If that's what, if the metrics is what matters to you, look at my flow through, look at my star report, look at my rate compared to the concept. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and really like, you know, and it, because I can only imagine, you know, somebody who's been conditioned to, to think in just a, in, in, purely through the lens of a, of a real estate investor or asset manager like, wait, free club sandwiches for everybody who says Ebony, like, no, that's no, no, no. We can't that's give anything right. away. From you. We can't do that. Oh my God. Like I could see the anxiety. I could see their heart rate racing. Right. But when your rate is, is you have higher rate, your occupancy is better. Um, you know, you're creating demand through hospitality, making people want to come in and stay making memories building connections. And it's also not only are you winning in the short term, right? Because you've won these awards, your hotel's performing well, we're seeing the short term results. I mean, how many reviews did you see on TripAdvisor that we've seen on your LinkedIn that are just people who are writing novels about their experience, right? So that's short term, (laughs) short term, short term, short term, but long term, right? What if that mailman decides to have his family reunion at the hotel in a year and a half. Like you just, right. this kind of stuff is real. It's practical. And I, and I truly, truly believe in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's why I think you're an anomaly because I think people are afraid to do what you're doing. I really do. I think there's a fear involved. Well, I don't, I don't, I, I, I wasn't afraid. I wasn't afraid. <laughs> you know, I, I was being solution oriented. And like, listen, the story about Ebony, it's going to make its way up the chain in that entertainment business. That story is going to go up the, the, the ladder. And same thing for the postman. What do you think he's going to talk about when he goes back to the post office to drop off his truck or, or what have you? It just, I mean, I'm not doing it in, with the mindset I have to win business from every person that walks through the door, but I'll, my full-time job right now is to be hospitable. <laughs> so... Um, you know, I, I even wrote in one of my LinkedIn posts, folks, it's not brain surgery, it's hospitality. What does that mean to you? You know, so um, yes, and the awards are nice. The accolations are very nice. The travel leisure awards have been, you know, I've been very proud. You know, U.S. World News, I've been very proud. Condé Nast Awards, I've been very proud. So um, I've had a Hotel of the Year Award. I've had a GM of the Year Award. I've had three hotels that have been under my tutelage win hotels of the year or service of the year for their performance. Um, It's, I don't do all the work. I just inspire. I I plant seeds. I plant seeds with the team. I plant seeds with the leadership team. I plant seeds with the guests that I meet or the vendors that I meet. Um, And it's not always a, it's not always let's go skip through the park and sing a happy song. I have, believe me, I have tough conversations. I'm very direct. I get to the point. If someone's not meeting my expectation, that's a problem. You know, I, I have to go down those roads too. So it's not all singing a song and holding hands and kumbaya. You know, sometimes it is, hey, look, you're not meeting the mark and this has got to change and I want to understand why and let's figure out a plan to fix this because this isn't going to work here and, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, it's... I think it's, it's almost seems like it's, it would be easier to have those tough conversations when you are setting the tone and setting the example every day for what the service excellence is going to look like for what the operations excellence is going to look like, so on and so forth. Uh, because not to mention the fact that there's nowhere for anyone to hide because you you've now you've seen everything. You've met every guest, you see the interactions, you're witnessing it. You hear how they answer the phone. You see what's going on. You see how they prepare the food. Um, so it just seems to me like it, it would almost make it easier now, maybe than maybe than before now that everything's so visible. But do you think, 
don't, or maybe you haven't thought about it, but do you think that you'll remove your desk from the lobby eventually? Do you think that you'll go back? Do you think that, like, where are you at now? After you've gone back to your roots, you've probably gone back, what, 20 years now to kind of come full circle on this? So what do you think? Is this yeah. permanent? I told my boss that when we start making budget, I'm going back to my office. But the desk is going to remain because I've learned of how valuable that time has been that I've spent in that desk. And I'm going to find somebody that has the personality of all personalities to sit there and to do what I was doing and to read. And that person will report directly back to me. Look, some hotels have a guest services manager. Some hotels rely on concierge. Um, you know, we all have a structure to follow, but that, that position can make money for the property. It can create loyalty and, um, I'll tell you the truth. This is a luxury hotel, but I had an experience at a Target three weekends ago when I was returning some clothes that I bought in the wrong size, um, some um, gym clothes. And it was six in the morning because Target opens early and I don't want to be out with the masses. And I was returning these things. And the way that this person greeted me, the passion that they showed about what a beautiful day it was outside and the conversation that he struck up with me was overwhelming and I was like wow you are a ball of fire you are the brightest you're like the sun you're shining so brightly and um, I said you know what I want to hire you in about three months and here's my card and um, don't forget about me we'll talk in about three months so I have an idea of who I want sitting in that chair already um, and the person's from a target it doesn't you don't have to work in luxury to represent luxury everybody wants to be treated with that type of sunshine. Everybody wants to experience someone that's making the day more special than they thought it was. And um, anyone can be trained to do anything technically, but the, that, kind of, that kind of spirit, that kind of love for your fellow man and passion about doing a job well is not something that you can teach. So you either have it or you don't. And if you don't, you don't work here. But when you have it to the extreme like he did, I really want you to work here. You'll learn about the hotel down the road, but I love your personality and that's who that's who needs to be sitting in my chair one day. That's that's really nice, Jeff. Um, I think <laughs> I think it, it really is kind of a, you've made that you've made the point right not that you intended to but you've you've made the point that it's maybe it won't be you you know if you had to kind of start to zoom out a little bit more as as the hotel gets busier and and everything like that and that's great because you've done a wonderful job leading the hotel through the years um but the importance of that remains like yeah you might be you might be going back to your office but the desk is still staying in the lobby there's still going to be somebody there to it's just like a, a hospitality ambassador or something or um right you know when I, exactly. I don't when i don't know if you remember when i kind of tagged craig pool and introduced you to him uh on, on one of the oh, posts yes, so do. the other day he and i were talking on the phone and uh we actually had had a brief conversation about you and what you're doing and just you know, I told him I was going to be interviewing you and, and uh, he was just like, I actually, he said that he seeks out your content because it's something that makes him feel good. Um, now, and Craig, oh. you guys are just two peas in a pod. He's like my mentor um, and was the, he's the first person I met that I think is running their hotels for the right reason. And up until I met you, I thought he was the only one there. Um, so it's nice to know that there's somebody else out there who's really doing it for the right reasons. Um, I hope to follow in both you and Craig's footsteps as well. Um, but my, my point is that Craig's hotel, he has dream makers, that's their title and they're out in the lobby and they're talking to mm. people and it's just whatever you need. If they have a dream, they can, okay. they can have it. Um, so, you know, Love just, that. just a title idea, maybe a seed of some sort I can plant to help you develop your new position. But, um, hey. Jeff, I just, I just, again, I just thank you for your contributions to hospitality. I thank you for, uh, proving really, really you have, because again, at a time when 
so many people are hearing this and they're saying, wow, this is such a 180 from, from my executive leadership right now, or this is, seems like a dream compared to what I'm going through right now. And you're proving that it can be done. You're proving that there's people out there and, and that are doing it for the right reasons. Um, I just can't wait to see what, what you guys do at the London West Hollywood and what you do uh, as well to continue to inspire. So thank you for being on Hospitality MD. With that, we will leave your LinkedIn profile in the show notes for today's episode because I think everybody should be connecting with you there to see more about what you're doing on a daily basis. I think you do a great job of documenting Thank that. You. Do you have any other um, channels that you'd like people to follow you on or any final sentiments you'd like to share with our audience? No, I just really decided to be more vocal on LinkedIn because that was the um, hotel community out there. And um, I wanted to inspire and um, plant some seeds with people about how they can make a difference during this time by simple acts of kindness. And not even just at work, but also in your personal life. I don't know if I told you or if you read the stories about the fact that I carry an extra pair of shoes in the back of my car, because when I see a homeless person walking without shoes, I have to stop and give them the shoes. So, um, you know, that's something that just seems outrageous to me, even if you are homeless, you need to have shoes on your feet. And um, that just happened to me last night. I just gave away a pair of shoes and um, I put a new pair of shoes in the trunk uh, for the next one that I see. So, you know, you can be kind in your life. You can make a difference in your life. You can reach out and be friendly to a complete stranger and make their day, you know? So um, I just, I just, it's something that I just believe in. You know, I, I really, really believe in that. I just, I want to put my head on my pillow and say, well, this day is over in my life and this is how old I am, but I'm proud to have lived this day. And I feel like I did something that was a little extra special and uh, now I can go to sleep. So um, yeah, just about being a good person on the planet. Yeah, the hospitality is transcendental from the hotel to life to everywhere. Um, it truly is a lifestyle and, and thanks for living it. Uh, you inspire people like me, you inspire people like Craig, you inspire uh, our audience as well. I know, I know our Hospitality MD audience is going to love this. So Jeff, I thank you again and we'll look forward to hearing more from you soon. Great to talk to you and thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you all so, so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Jeff. Be sure to connect with him on LinkedIn in the show notes below and also to follow all of our Hospitality MD socials. Videos right here are definitely some ones that you wanna check out as well. Thank you guys so much for supporting Hospitality MD. We'll see you soon.